Hello plant lovers, Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel and yes we have a little Miltoniopsis catch up but first do hit subscribe if you want. I post every week about cool cold intermediate orchids that I'm growing here in Melbourne. And yes, today, ta-da, it's Miltoniopsis flowering time. And I have done a video about Miltoniopsis care, which I will link below and here. But I wanted to just tell you the story of this one. Look at that, a single bloom. And this is what is known in Australia as an Aussie battler, which means someone who just triumphs against all the odds to triumph <laughs> and to succeed in the end. So let me tell you the story of this Miltoniopsis. Yes, plant lovers, firstly, let me show you where I am. I am in Melbourne, which you can see here, which is in Southeast Australia. And it is, mm, you can describe it as a cool Mediterranean climate. So we have cold, wet winters that don't freeze, and we can have hot and dry summers, which can also be wet and cool. So go figure. But I think the important thing to note is that we don't freeze here in Melbourne and we don't get frosts. And that dictates what I grow. So I'm generally growing things that are cool, cold, intermediate in the house. Sometimes nudging on the warm for things that I grow indoors all the time. Otherwise, that's it. Indoors, outdoors, or get out of the pool. And that brings us to a neat little segue about this fantastic Miltoniopsis and a COVID survival story. Now, you might remember if we go back in time that these two plants were bought at exactly the same time. This one was given to a friend of mine as a birthday present and this one I kept because I'm that kind of guy. So they were essentially exactly the same size. They both had the same number of pseudobulbs, the same number of growth points and I seem to remember there was about four and they both looked as healthy. Different types though. So this one, as we might know, is Miltoniopsis Kelly Spangled Banner, which you might know is a name that I struggle with <laughs> but anyway we'll forgive you beautiful orchid and this one has an equally silly name i feel it's called banana fandango which conjures up all manner of strange images but anyway so they were bought at the same time now my friend had this in her office in the city now during covid of course she was working from home and had to take all the plants in her office home, but her house is at quite high altitude here in Victoria. So it's outside of Melbourne, much higher up. And where she lives, you can actually get snowfalls and regularly sub-zero temperatures, which is sub 32 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you in America. So this orchid is a cool tolerant, but not a cold tolerant orchid and basically, it almost died. Now, we had a moment between lockdowns and my friend gave me an emergency call and said, you have got to come and rescue Banana Fandango. It is not gonna survive COVID lockdown up the mountains of Victoria. So we had a brief interlude where we were able to travel. So off I went, <laughs> Orchid Rescue 101. It came home with me and this pseudobulb growth point here, which is the new one, was already a green shoot. So there was a very good indication that it was going to survive, but it was looking a little sad and droopy. It was essentially just too cold and too dark where it was. So I nurtured it and kept it and loved it and fed it and repotted it. So the important thing I think with lots of orchids, not all, so this is a tricky generalization, but a lot do like to be quite tight in the pot and a bit pot bound. And I've noticed Miltoniopsis certainly fit that bill. So this one was in a much larger pot. So the first thing I did to sort of reinvigorate its life and rehabilitate it was to pot it down. And in fact, it could perhaps have gone even a smaller size, but it was such a large plant with quite a good root system that I felt that this pot was okay for it. So that was the first thing I did. I repotted it and I repotted it into a pretty standard orchid mix for me, which is a mixture of bark, uh, perlite, a little bit of charcoal, a little bit of shell grit, which as we know is chicken food, but it's full of calcium, and my secret ingredient, mycorrhizal fungi, and a couple of granules of a slow release general fertilizer. And because it sort of needed to be nurtured, I put it in a fairly sheltered, but still bright indirect light spot with really good constant temperature. So there we are. Now it was outside for its recuperation so it had the natural fluctuations between day and night temperature 
And as we can see, what did it do? But out of that sole surviving new pseudobulb, it produced a single flower. It's autumn in Australia. And what I have discovered with my Multoniopsis is that they have a really strong flush of flowers in spring and then a slightly secondary flush in autumn. So you don't get as many flower spikes and not as many blooms per spike. But this one, this is the first time it's bloomed and it sent out one heavenly flower. So I think this orchid deserves the COVID survival gold medal, don't you? And what I will come in and show you is that there are new growths emerging from the pseudobulb and my friend is now back in her office. And so this week, Banana Fandango, you're going home, but not before I got to enjoy the flower. Now, I won't go into um, Miltoniopsis care because I did make the video before, but needless to say, ah, oh, the fragrance of these is heavenly and okay i'm going to try and describe it poetically for you well weirdly actually maybe it's just suggestion but there is a slight banana <laughs> fragrance to you banana fandango but it's a very light very fragrant slightly fruity smell and the the fragrance tends to reach its peak during the midday as the sun is highest and it's warmest and then it shuts down a little as the day progresses so they don't smell at night so clearly this is something that is pollinated by daytime pollinators out in the wilds. So we know that they are epiphytes, that they are commonly known as the pansy orchid, and you might get a sense why when you look at that flower, it really does look like a pansy, doesn't it? Sensational. And they have been hybridized quite a lot to produce all manner of sensational colors. So banana fandango is much yellower with this beautiful red center. And then Kelly spangled banner has much more stronger slashes of red across the top there and a deeper frill around here, but kind of the same base pale yellow color, although I think this is a little stronger. But as I don't have a huge number of flowers on this, I can't really say if this is consistent to what it's gonna look like. Needless to say, I love Miltoniopsis. Now this baby, as we can see, is going gangbusters. And I think in spring of this year, I might consider repotting it. We'll just see how many new growth points come out. Uh, it's not to the edge of the pot yet. There is still a bit of room around there, but I've seen specimens of this in massively wide, but quite shallow pots. So I'm very much looking forward to that. This baby though can certainly stay in its pot for probably another 12 months. We'll just see how many growth points start to come out of it. And they can often get two, three, four growth points at a time. So they do grow really, really quickly. So that is one thing to keep your eye on in terms of its potting and its fertilizing. There we are, plant lovers. A, a brief tale of COVID survival and joy. So this is Banana Fandango. It is flowered for me. And my friend, in fact, is coming to stay on Thursday night so she can take it home and enjoy the flower. I am very happy that this orchid survived oh, the trials and tribulations of lockdown as, um, as I hope all of us have. But here we are, a success story. So Miltoniopsis, it is mid-autumn here in Australia and they've all come out to bloom for me. The fragrance is heavenly. I did have a little accident with two last winter, which nearly froze to death. So they are definitely not in the naughty corner, but in the rehab corner, no flower spikes, which I'm a little disappointed, <sighs> but I must be patient. And I feel in spring, I might get some blooms off those. So we'll do another Miltoniopsis catch up when they have finally recovered. And I think that is the other point too about orchids that if you get it wrong, it can be a long 12 month cycle until you kind of get back to that point on the, the cycle of the orchid where you might get blooms on new growth. So oh, it can be a bit of learning experience. This one managed the whole recovery process fairly quickly and now it's got lots of new growths. I think it's gonna have a great spring and an amazing flower display for my friend next season. There we are, plant lovers. I hope this brought you some joy in your Miltoniopsis journey. If you have any questions, feel free to put them below. I am an amateur here in Melbourne, struggling my way through orchid growing, so don't take my word for gospel. But anyway, here we are. These are all looking sensational, and I look forward to seeing you next week with something else equally as interesting. See you then.